magnificent brewery, fresh cow and draft. Big show tonight, massive show tonight. Heath Shaw, super Ripper. player for a couple of clubs, premiership player at Collingwood to join us. And a man who has given great service to the game of Australian football, Hayden Kennedy, through a long and distinguished career in the umpiring department, is going to join us. To You're white maggot. About... Sorry, sorry. It's just... So I just can't. It's just, just force of habit over uh, 30 years. And uh, it's great to be... guest tonight, and we're happy to have him. It's, for, it's great to be here with you. Boo! Sorry, sorry. And it's great to have him back he's as well. Back, Again, he's back. Sam yeah. Pegg, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful to be back. Well, I missed you, guys. Where yeah. were you? What did oh, you do? Mate, I, just, I just had a week, up, a week off, you know what I mean? Just to freshen up and uh, mm. caught up with mates and, and went, out, went where, out. Where'd you go? Club Yo-Yo <laughs> is um, it's a little place called Club Yo-Yo. Club Yo-Yo. Um, I was there. Big night, was it? Big night. Well, I, my mates were there to dance. I was just there to watch the fights. <laughs> and uh, mate, that place has changed a lot. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of handing in my medallion. <laughs> Not really. Uh, lost no. it's not lost really. Uh, yeah, okay. But, but yeah, mate, yeah. seriously, we're talking about, of course, the Shy Bolton and the Daniel Rioli situation. Yeah, when, yeah, we are. when you first heard that last last Saturday, the Sunday morning, what did you think? Before? Thank Christ, it's not dusty. <laughs> 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 the first thought is what came through. Oh, by the way, Marty did a great job, I thought. He was very good. Yeah. 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 Well, no, no surprise to anyone, but, you know, there's one of the funniest men in Australia. Yep. Um, but, you know, I think some people forget how hard he works, you know what I mean? Like, he, he really cares and he's very nuanced, you know what I mean? Sometimes I, learnt, I especially enjoyed, uh, enjoyed Marty last week throwing to clips <laughs> by just sometimes saying, take a look at this. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it's a, a short, it, sometimes short. you can overthink these yeah, things. No, that can. man is a professional. <laughs> he really is. He really is. It was good fun. Hey, while you're away, um, it was great to have Marty on the show. But while you're away, Geelong, if we can just get it back onto the footy Here front. we go. Here did, we go. Did they fire an ominous shot across the bow of the competition? Those two last blokes in particular, Hawkins and Cameron, really looked like they got the ball rolling very quickly between the two of them. That was a pull apart of Richmond, not the like of which we've seen for quite some time. That was thorough, complete evisceration of the power team of, this, right. of this generation. All right. <laughs> Mate, can I say... Major look at Epton second rate. <laughs> And hats off. Second rate. <laughs> hats off to them. I have nothing to say, but um, we have just never ever been able to beat them in round eight. <laughs> um, <laughs> grand finals don't seem to be a problem, but in round eight, we just can't seem to get them. They just seem to get it together. They're round eight specialists. Can I? Can I... <laughs> By the way, congratulations to Ga Gary Rowan. I thought who played. A great game, and it was yeah. great to see him considering he missed out on the grand final. Huh? No, no, he, he played the grand final. Did he? Gary, yeah, he played the grand final. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. I reckon I've watched that 15 right. times and I, <laughs> right. I can't I remember saw, I seeing saw, him. I saw, <laughs> go back tonight and watch it again. <laughs> yeah, right, he played. How do you spell Rowan? How do you spell Rowan? I see what hey, you're by doing. By the way, yeah. and who's, who's the new power forward at Geelong? Jeremy Cameron. Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy Cameron. Cameron. Yeah. I've got a thing against yep. uh, hiring power forwards off expansion clubs. Oh, have you? <laughs> Not <laughs> off. Oh, okay. Come yeah. on, yeah. you've got to draw the line. <laughs> no, it was a magnificent <laughs> performance by Geelong. Yeah. It was a magnificent oh, performance. Can I just by say this, by the way? Yeah. Uh, it's not all beer and skittles down there oh. at Geelong. Do you see fractures, signs of disharmony? Have a look at these two. That's Reece Stanley and Dangerfield. Yeah. Oh. Looks like looks like Bill and Melinda Gates, Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look. What's going on? Yeah. Yeah, you're not allowed to make eye contact with Dangerfield, apparently. <laughs> not interested. Why wouldn't yeah. they sit together? Have a look at this. He's Googling <laughs> Reese. He's Googling Reese Stanley. <laughs> what do I know about Reese Stanley? No. That's not a team uh, marching as one towards. Uh, oh, very good. No, very good. Very good. He only talks to players in the same pay bracket, and good on him for that. I respect. <laughs> that. Um, yeah. Now listen. Last week what? it was a big. The, the Tiger Army. You're not used to being on the receiving end. No, they're not. And it resulted in images like this, where you're going. They're, they're just not used to it. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And I think. Yep. Trent Cochin and even KB not looking. <laughs> By the way, that's the reason I go to the footy. Yeah. <laughs> Takes us back to see, see Richmond yeah. supporters like that, you know, because it's been too long. Oh. It's been Takes too you long back to you. Like, I might be wondering, by the way, Mick, you were at that game. I uh, was. No footage of you. Of course, you'd left at half time. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Um, it was a great night. It was a great <laughs> night all around. We'll be back. Are we, uh, you 20... put, have you put a line through the Tigers? No, not quite yet. No, 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 no. But it's Dynasty hard. Dynasty over. There's some signs. There's some signs. But it is still early in the season. Hey, 24 hours later, of course, trouble did more trouble found its way to Richmond, didn't it, with a couple of the young players. You've already mentioned the, um, the scuffle that uh, found Shea Bolton and Daniel Riol at Club Yo-Yo, of course. It was... Um, <laughs> Um, yeah. It was it was a bit of an issue for them. By the way, you know, I mean, yeah, I know you, you, you lost the game on Friday night, and judging by your reports, you, you lost the fights on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> You know, not, not that I was there or anything. It was a bit of a shame. I mean, took the gloss What's off. What's the damage? Well, it took no, wrist and uh, he'll be out for two or three weeks. Shame. Out with a wrist is yeah. a broken. Right, it's a yeah, fraction wrist. Yeah. So as long as they don't send him to Bert Newton's doctor. <laughs> 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 yeah. It took me. Um, it took. <laughs> Bert's a gag man. He would love that. Do you know my favourite interview was on the Today Show? <laughs> but this is true. Yeah, well soon, but, 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 yeah, by the way, yeah, yeah, one of the best in the business. The king. Yeah. Big fit Troy the, man. The king. That's right. But hey, he, there was an interview on the Today Show and they go, let's get some uh, testimonies from his old uh, friends. Please welcome the leggy Rhonda Birchmore. And I'm going, oh. <laughs> hey, <laughs> don't rub it in. <laughs> Well, everyone's leggy compared to Bert. I mean, hey, just... it did take the gloss off. <laughs> it took the gloss. Bert would love this. It took the he, gloss. He'd he, he want to like it, by the way. It, <laughs> took... <laughs> it took the gloss off Shea Bolton's mark 24 hours early, which in the minds of many is one of the absolute... In the pantheon of great marks... The bizarre thing about this, as great as that mark was, yep. can you believe it? It didn't win mark of the week. This, from Brody Majek, has actually won mark of the week. 51 to 41 per cent of the public vote has gone to the Collingwood Centre half forward, and he is the official winner of the round eight mark of the week. I think I know week. why. Well, I think I've, I've tracked it down. Now, one of my favourite commentators is BT, yep, uh, yep. Seven Zone. He usually gets it right. He's he, magnificent, Brian. He, you know, he yep. transfers that electricity, he gives you goosebumps, oh, generally, yeah. and yeah. nails the big moments. He sure does. I think he's undercooked this just oh. slightly, oh. Uh, and it may have impacted the <laughs> excitement factor of the goal. Have a look. Short to Graham. He's able to advance to 50. Puts a long ball in the square. The number's in favour. Look out! Up they go, Bolton! <laughs> it's like a chess mark. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to give that yeah, the I, full... Yeah, he did, yeah. Uh, and that's cost show, show buttons. I say it's cost him uh, mark of the year. <laughs> Commentating is hard. That's is it? Well, that's it, it is. It's very difficult. Yeah, well, you prove that every week. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um... <laughs> no, but I'm just saying it's hard because the action is so fast. You know I mean, and big moments can come out of nowhere, oh, they just, can. Like, yep. just yep. like they did there. And as they did in 2017 when Charlie Cameron took a big mark. Oh, yes. And um, this is while Basil Zemplis, the commentator, was talking about the cricket yeah. at the time. And uh, put it this way, Basil, have a listen, did not break stride. It's like Mark Taylor at first slip. You wouldn't know if they're none for 250 or seven for nine. Give me the anecdote, you just keep going. Total pro. Well, what about Luke Darcy? One of the uh, best. Again, Channel yep. 7 zone. Yep. He brings the excitement, even when it's not a mark. Natanui dumps it. Oh, flying right! What about that? Nowhere near it. <laughs> what about that? Nowhere near it. Nowhere near it. Hayden, Ken Hayden Kenny's going to join us a bit later on. We'll dive <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a slightly, <laughs> Sorry, I just do a slightly deeper dive into the world of umpiring then. But yeah. the great courage required, particularly from goal umpires. And we saw it up at the Gabba, didn't we, with uh, this bloke on the weekend, Adam Wojcic. This was beyond the call of duty. This bloke went where angels fear to tread. Have a look at him, backing into the oncoming traffic just to get the decision right. I mean, look at that, look at that. That is magnificent. Mickey, you almost, you almost got called for tunnelling. <laughs> I, I, I think he's been picked to play for Carlton this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's worse than Bert in this week, apparently. Oh, I thought that would have gone worse than the Birchmore gear. Anyway, hey, moment, by the way. That moment, what was the name of that umpire? Uh, Adam Wojcic. That moment has been commemorated <laughs> and Adam Wojcic joins a select few of umpires to get their own footy card. Oh, really? Have a look at this. Yeah. This is a special moment. Have oh, a look that's at that. <laughs> Yes. Adam Wojcik, goal umpire, and there's a, even a space for the 
the um, space for an autograph down the bottom, which to me seems a bit optimistic. <laughs> anyway, hey, well done, Adam Wojcik. Well done, all the umpires who train oh. for just these occasions. Yes. Have a look. This yes. is in the umpires' rooms before the game. Yeah. <laughs> look at it. No, it's magnificent. That's how it goes, these days. Actual footage from the umpires' rooms. It's a very robust... Uh, it's a very you, robust you, game, these days. You know, it's good to point out, by the way, that, that, that that's actually our complete brain trust of this show. <laughs> in, 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 that, in, that, in that In that video, clip, right, all in our that best clip, producers. All of them there. Well, again, yeah. they have always been prepared to put themselves in harm's way, particularly the goal umpires. Mm. Absolutely. If they have to go, they go, Mate, boys. not the best use of a goal umpire as a stepladder. That would be in 2007 when Stephen King... Took this hanger oh, over the goal the umpire five. Michael Hammond. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nicky, that's just a, that that's just a big, that's that's a big a, ride. It's crushed. Big that's, ride. That's Please. a big grab. I'd have to say. It is. Hey, uh, one of the other big stories that's been one of the narratives of 2021 has been the Port Adelaide prison bar jumper. And it took another turn on the weekend. Who really cares about this, honestly? Oh, there's, about we, 30, there's, about 30, yeah, there's about 30 people in Australia who do. But this was be after the game. They've had their win. They changed into the prison bar wow. jumper, the traditional Port Adelaide uh, jumper, and they've sung it. So the enduring memories of the game are uh, uh, the Port Adelaide players in the prison bar jumper. And, this is... yeah, they made a bit of a statement by doing that, didn't you they? Got a, you know, they've got a, got a feel for the property, Stuart. He's got to wash two sets of jumpers. <laughs> That's now. a you know, Is it a showdown or fashion week? No, I mean, there's, there's more no, changes than Diana Roth. They've decided to, f to flip the bird to a couple of people who have, you know, stood in their way well, from they're, wearing they're, their traditional. They're trying to get a reaction out of the yeah. Collingwood faithful. They did. And uh, yeah. I thought Eddie Maguire, the former president, might bite, but they couldn't get him because mm. he said no comment, mm. and his no comment went for nearly a minute <laughs> as he stretched out his no commenting <laughs> till he almost commented. Let's have a look. Now, Ed, you've got a dog in the fight. I wonder what your take is about this, uh, well, provocative uh, clash last night. <laughs> no, no, nothing from me, John. Uh, all I'll say is that the AFL may be saying nothing, but that is a direct poke in the eye to Gillan McLaughlin and the AFL Commission. They're playing with fire now, Port Adelaide, on this because they have signed an agreement that they would not manufacture any of those jumpers for merchandise. And as we've seen in the crowd, they're starting to overplay their hand a little bit here. It's moved out of Collingwood and Port Adelaide. Now they're taking on City Hall, who give them $7 million a year more than any uh, th than the Collingwood Football Club. <laughs> That's fire. So uh, there you go. David Kosh is sticking his nose into the AFL territory now. It's a big sized nose. I hope it doesn't get it broken. <laughs> Imagine if he had a comment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he can't help it. He's too passionate, that man. Yeah. That's um, that's not even my favourite no comment, by the way. But my favourite no comment. Oh, is really? Peter McKenna's in 1985. Oh, right. Yes. He was not going to be drawn into comment commenting on an incident that he's just seen, and, and when he said he wasn't going to comment, he was not going to comment. Well, I had a great view of uh, both incidents, uh, Jack. I won't comment now what happened, but they were two king hits behind the player. <laughs> that's all I say. <laughs> He's like a clam. You just can't, <laughs> you just, won't get a word just, out of him. Absolutely not. Don't go anywhere. Yes. There's more to come on the show tonight. When we come back, a man who's been a great servant to the great game, Hayden Kennedy, to join us. On the... <laughs> Six hundred and forty-six uh, steps from my house. Okay. Twelve hundred and thirty-two <laughs> back. <Right. laughs> Involved with the show via our socials. We've got all the platforms covered, and we love your feedback, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Love a lot it. of feedback this week, making sure that we uh, pointed out that Zach Sproul. Who? Is that his name? That's his name. Zach Sproul from GWS had his first win. He uh, did, not which his is first, his well, first win. It's a big exactly. moment. Yeah, right. And obviously, uh, you know, the, your first win, traditionally, you have the old Gatorade shower. Yeah. Team pour all over you. Yeah. Uh, due yeah. To COVID. It's like a rites of passage now, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. Due to COVID restrictions, though, uh, it wasn't the normal communal affair. Fortunately, it was the COVID-19. You know, I'm not to give you... No one will have a Gatorade shower, so I'm going to give myself one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Want to win? <laughs> Good feeling. <laughs> Good feeling. He's my favourite player. There he is. <laughs> that, that's a concussion test right no, there. That's my really, favourite player. That bloke. Really uh, have you been keeping an eye on commentary during the week? You generally, even when you're away, you keep an eye on the commentary? I never miss it. I no, never miss it. you and, don't. Uh, no. You know, I just want to say that Luke Hodge has been a revelation in the commentary box this year for Channel yeah. 7. Yep. <laughs> oh. sorry, sorry. sorry, I almost got through that. But... <laughs> He's been great and a wonderful addition. He's fantastic. And, I always uh, want to know what he's thinking. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> no, it's great. He'll tell you too. It's great. But he, he, Luke Hodge may not for ask... Sorry, Luke Hodge may not ask for any more Geelong games this year after this attempt at pronouncing Geelong's Asava Radigalia. You can see what Geelong are trying to do. The, that short little 45 then roll and play on. Gathley, Guthrie did it early to Radigalua, and then Isaac Smith just did it then in the middle of the ground. <laughs> Mate, Brad Hodge, Brad Hodge can't even pronounce his own name sometimes. <laughs> hey, that's well beyond him. Luke. Sava Radigalia. Yeah, but that Isaac, makes him... <laughs> Brad Hodge? Yeah. yeah. They're both the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> He is our commentator of the week, and as he such, is. he wins and is awarded uh, our <laughs> bottle of Radicalua. <laughs> which, Hodgie. <laughs> the old Radicalua. <laughs> I love it. Hey, we love Sarah. No, really we went to a lot of trouble said to Brad get Hodge. that. Yeah. yeah, you did. I really say Brad Hodge. You said Brad Hodge. Yeah, no, check the tape. No. You did. Brad Hodge. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Uh, hey, we love celebrating We're on air, guys. people who've made. <laughs> We're on air. We love celebrating people who've made magnificent contributions to the game. Uh, players, coaches, and umpires. There'd be no game without them. A man who's coached five uh, umpired five AFL grand finals, 495 games he did before most recently becoming the AFL umpires coach. He gave that away last week. He's been an unbelievable servant to football, and he's he's here so we can celebrate his contribution. Please make him welcome, Hayden Kennedy, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Job well done. I'm just, I'm just, uh, just waiting. No, no, yeah, you're no, right. No, no, um, you're a most yeah, fantastic, fantastic career, and you know I'm one of the happiest people going around when you talk about football. Good news. You should be. It's been a, a wonderful <laughs> career. Um, I really want to boo right now. <laughs> 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 You must get sick of it. Yeah, it's what a great career. Honestly, what I'm intrigued about is what happens with life after football. Oh, do, you love... in, do you enter like a witness protection scheme? <laughs> or, uh, do, 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 do you get new, new identities and passports and they take you to another part of the world? What does life after... Exactly that. Uh, exactly ...up involve? Oh, no, I just actually don't know really what I'm going, going to do. So uh, just sit back, take a couple of weeks break and enjoy weekends. It's always okay. good to retire, I think, without a plan. <laughs> um, look, can we, can, you've been involved in so many unbelievable five grand finals, as we said. We're Let's gonna, have a look at that. Some was of the, the two thousand grand final. Might have been the fourth, I think, of your five grand finals. Some, some of the hottest moments, the biggest moments. That was all yeah, going on. This one, you were there for that. Look at you. This oh, is history. You've got a front row seat yeah. to some of the most historical moments this game has produced. Sort of siren gate. The game yeah. we couldn't hear the siren. Where was that? That was down at uh, Lon Launceston. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What's the greatest thing about it, Hayden? What's the thing that draws you to it and kept you in it for as long as you did? What's the best thing about umpiring at this level? Oh, well, when you love football, um, you, you, you're right in it. And, you know, I went through a few decades there, you know, the late 80s and 90s, 2000s, 10s, and we, we, there were some just great footballers going around. Yeah, so yep. when people talk about football, you know, I, I know I was there. Ablett, Lockett, Dunstall, yep. all those guys. And, the, you know, the list keeps on going on. So yep. I, I, that's why... You would have reported all those blokes. <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if, when they didn't do anything, I just reported them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, if you're... Uh, obviously, we view the game differently to you, but if, when you're involved in a game that's a classic, do you know that it's a good game as your umpire? No. You don't? No, no idea. No. Really? No. It's not until ten years later that you realise that was a bloody good game that you're, you're a part of because you're just you're just in it. You just you want to do your best and you're in the zone and off you go. Did you ever vote uh, give Brownlow, Brownlow votes to anyone who wasn't a midfielder? 
<laughs> if we get sinking hard, you can't, can't, can't remember. Uh, no. Why do umpires right. love the midfielders? I'm, 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 it's a genuine question because obviously you're there, you see them up at close quarters, but they, it's well, the midfielders are generally your better players. Like any award is won by a midfielder, and the Brownlow appears to be no difference in recent times. So um, they're the players that you know get the engine going. There's some great forwards, there's some brilliant forwards and brilliant backs, but unfortunately, what's happened is that you know the the, the, the better players. Mm. In that mm. disposal type of game, is uh, are in the mid. You know, yeah, right. Umpires have ruined the game. Uh, you, you get some advice along the way that would hold you in pretty good stead. Your first game, I'm led to believe, you got a fairly significant piece of advice that, that, that was pretty yeah, important for you. Yeah, so back in 1988 it was, and uh, we umpired the game, Peter Cameron and myself, and um, it was decided on the last kick of the day, Adrian Gleeson kicked a goal, and uh, all I can remember was, oh, that's fantastic, and Camo yelled out, get to the horses, get to the horses. <laughs> and, of course, in those days, the crowd came on and the, the two big police horses used to come <laughs> yeah. and just to get right in between them so he didn't uh, get attacked by anyone. So. <laughs> get to the horses yeah. and stay with me forever. Um, I, I, I wanted to ask you, the, the umpiring now as you leave the game is far more complicated than it would have been when you got in. Oh, I can remember a time when the umpire was one man with a whistle in white who ran yeah. the length of the ground up and back. Yeah. It's got to the point now where I've watched this game all my life and even I can't understand what the freeze are. Just to give you an idea of how complicated and how mm. far this game has become, I'm going to show you a clip <laughs> and we'll comment on the back. But this is uh, uh, this is like the evacuation of Saigon or something here. <laughs> this is so... There's so much going on. Have a look. Marks. Here. Yeah, you can step Oh, Brandon, here. Stand there now. You out. Hold Charlie. Reese, hold. <laughs> Come around. Charlie. Come around. Callum. With Callum. Daniel Rick there. <laughs> One more metre. Don't go Thank close. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Daniel Rick. Hold. Daniel Rick. Stay out, Daniel. Hold here. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> Move it on. Play on. Play on. Knock this down. Play on. <laughs> Off we go. <laughs> so, is that how complex the game has become? Well, well, maybe that's a little bit overboard, but um, yeah, it is. It is complex. It's documentary got... footage. We didn't film it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually, really it actually happened. happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they're all got a role to do, and you know, keep the players back, and yeah, it's it's. It's hard work out there. Yeah, no, Has that yeah, changed? Yeah. That instruction that that's changed. That changed during the from the start of your career to the end, didn't it? Didn't oh it yeah, yeah. Like we we used to be. Not heard, so you mm. could say a thing or two, mm. and, um, and players could say a thing or two to us. So, but then once the match time came through, we had to really <laughs> calm down what down. we were saying. <laughs> and, the, the, uh, the physical, you know, the, the physical side of the game's changed a fair bit too, hasn't it, Sam? I mean, you've always been a student of this. Absolutely. Well, I prefer to time Hayden when you know the umpires. Umpires nowadays are a bit. I know that they've got. It's a different game. You're always on a, about this. They've yeah. got our umpire in a different way. But I remember a day when it's just they weren't as flashy as as they are at the moment. I mean, I prefer a simpler time, a bit more subtle, like, you know, this guy. You know, just... A, <laughs> you know, it's just... You, ca you, almost ca <laughs> you almost can't even tell... You almost can't even tell what he's, what he's actually doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and then, and look at this. Look at this. Thank you. That one there. <laughs> There, he actually got in trouble for over, overdoing it. Yeah, it's definitely changed. Mm. Um, you were, you were the boss. What have you been? You've been the boss of the umpires. What, have, what are you? Yes, I have been. Yes. I love the way you do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> really, all over this. Tate, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but you oversaw a beautiful moment in oh, 2019. This is, this is when a yeah. uh, boundary umpire, Dylan T, got down on one knee and proposed to a field umpire, Alini Gluftus. Um, now, this was a beautiful moment. I'm obviously, like, it's a field umpire and a boundary umpire. I'm against mixed marriages. <laughs> <laughs> As a general rule, but hey, what did you what did you make? Did you know that was going to happen? Did you I, sign off on it? I might have got a heads up that that was about to happen a couple of days out beforehand. So um, that was the first time they'd ever umpired together. So for all intents and purposes, it was just going to be a photo in the middle of the ground. Are they married? Uh, getting married in January oh, in Adelaide. Right. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can I ask? Is she going <laughs> to throw the bouquet or bounce it? She's going to. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to come in backwards. <laughs> yeah, apparently they haven't consummated the relationship yet because you get ten weeks for touching an umpire. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I could go all night. <laughs> you'll be you'll be you'll be going to the wedding, of course, won't you? Oh, I, don't, going? I, I won't be invited to that one. Oh, okay, right. No, no, no. Okay. Hey, one of the hot topics this this year in umpiring has been emerging is the insufficient attempt, otherwise known as the deliberate out of bounds. I don't want to put you out in the hot seat, but please tell me what was going through. As an experienced umpire who made this call against Cam Zerha on the weekend, everybody in footy was talking about it. That was paid insufficient attempt. Yeah. What, what's, he, what's he thinking, Hayden? What's, what's going through his mind? So, so that was, yeah, we, we showed that at coaching on Tuesday night and we, and we, um, we actually laugh. worked through... <laughs> <laughs> As to the reason why, you know. <laughs> is, that the, is that decision the reason yeah. to retire? <laughs> well done. I've seen it all. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, we, we just got our communication wrong with that one, and you know, it, sh it should not have been paid. Well, I think we all know that it shouldn't have been paid, and mm. we just talked about the commentary that we had between both umpires and. Hopefully we'll straighten it out. Okay. I'll defend you. If that was a shot for goal, it deserves to be penalised, by the way. <laughs> um, you, you know, uh, who's, the, who's the boss of football? Steve, Steve Hocking. Hocking. Yeah, Steve Hocking, Hocking yeah. by the way. I'd like you to know, he thought that he was fine for that to be uh, declared uh, deliberate out of bounds. If you want to compare how things have changed, here's Steve Hocking in 1989. Uh, and just, uh, you'd be the decision if this is deliberate or not. <laughs> the ball taken away by Phoebe. Down towards the right half-forward flank for Melbourne. Wilson, <laughs> And the ball was taken away almost deliberately by Stephen Hawking. That was paid. That was paid not deliberate, by yeah, the way. That was a skill error, that one. Yeah, skill <laughs> error. Yeah, 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 Back yeah, in those man. days, you had to punch the ball out of the ground for it to be deliberate. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was a bit different. So we don't know what you're doing. Have you loved it? Just before. Oh, I've, I've absolutely I've loved had, it. I've had a ball. Absolute, absolute ball. You, you leave the game with enormous. Re the, the industry has enormous respect for you. So thank you. Um, absolutely. Yeah, you've done it. Good luck to you, and thank you for coming in tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, did you get a farewell? What kind of farewell did they give you? Oh, uh, when you... Um, I'm all good. I'm just happy to go out. Yeah. No, no, you did oh, a farewell, uh, like, yeah. like Darren Goldspinks, which was Perfect. very moving and touching. Have a look at this. We'll miss, we'll miss you, Goldie. No. <laughs> <laughs> And that's his own children. <laughs> Hayden, thank, thank you for coming you. in. Good guys, nice, thank you. Hayden Kennedy, what a job he has done with a few contributions in his mind. Another man who's made an enormous contribution to what he joins us next. Kennedy, our next guest has made an unbelievable contribution to footy. It will ever be enshrined as an immortal at the Collingwood Footy Club as a premiership player down there. Played over 150 games for the Giants as well. Please make him welcome. Heath Shaw, everyone. <laughs> one, one of only four players, Mickey, to play 150 games for two clubs. That's a pretty remarkable part of, uh, piece of football company you're in. Well, that means you either got traded or sacked by one club, so, <laughs> um, which I did. So you did. Um, it is it is good to be a life member of, of both clubs. Only got the premiership with one, but um, yeah, tried the hardest against yeah, almost against the Tigers, and we only lost by eighty odds, so it wasn't too. <laughs> <laughs> Went down to the wire. Yeah. <laughs> who are the others? Just playing. Oh, the this, others. You know? uh, yeah, I do. Uh, Sean Burgoyne, Bernie Quinlan, and Marcus Ashcroft, who played for the Lions and the Bears. So it's a bit. Whether pretty we give that to company, Marcus, we, get, we give it to Marcus. It's sort of two different. Have a look at the highlights. <laughs> I mean, you're a magnificent rebounding halfback flanker. A lot of people suggested you probably could have played a bit more time in the midfield, maybe even a bit forward. But this Where, was... where'd you play your junior footy? I was a natural forward, um, <laughs> and I, I blame Mick Moldhouse for. Throw me on the half-back flank in my second year and said, you need to learn how to defend, son. And I, I got stuck there for 15 years. So. <laughs> well, as, as, we can see, as we can see, it stopped you going forward and kicking goals, didn't it? <laughs> this is, but you're a great defender. Did, mate, how, can I ask you this half-serious question? You, did you like to play on a man or did you or did you kind of zone off a bit? What was your go? Well, the, I've always said the best form of defending is having the ball in your hands. Yeah, so, good point. Um, I did like having the ball in my gotcha. hands. And, very could, courageous. Could you believe you end up, could, <laughs> Can you believe when you left Collingwood and you entered this second part of your footy journey? Can you believe that you actually ended up playing 150 plus games? Like in your wildest dreams, could you have imagined you'd do that? Well, I signed a five-year deal, so I knew it was a I big thing. <laughs> Yeah, 
Uh, I, yeah, I did hang on for the last two years. It's at a little the, bra- the five years, it was a bit brazen on your behalf, let's be honest, you know? Yeah, well... Why'd you leave? Tell me why you left. Um, well, when the coach doesn't like you that much, it, <laughs> it doesn't make it easy. But, um, well, the, the story goes, obviously, when I was getting traded by Collingwood... <laughs> yes. I was in, um, in Ligon Street with Gubby Allen... Stephen Silvani, Leon Cameron, we were having a little discussion about me coming yep. potentially to the Giants. They were talking about how good it's going to be to have Buddy there I and mean, Buddy's going to live in Bondi and he's going to get his yacht to training. I can, <laughs> I can hitch a ride with him. And um, That meeting went pretty well and then got in the car and I was driving home and a mate of mine sent a message to me saying, Buddy, nine years for the Swans. <laughs> the I'm swans. like, these guys are bullshitting me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but I found out no one knew about that one. And, yeah, standing and then, there in your life jacket waiting for the boat to take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the joins up the deal a little bit and, um, yeah. and away I went. Well, that's one, uh, <laughs> one part of your career. Let's take you back to the first game. And for someone who's about to go and play 300 brilliant games of football, there wasn't a ringing <laughs> confidence in you by the commentators, Dermot Burton in particular, uh, just ahead of your first game. Just have a look at the, the debutant. He saw he cannot run. Poor little guy, first game. He's out there. He cannot run. He's cramped or he's injured. He cannot get out of a trot. It might just be his ungainly gait there. Right. He cannot run. Look at him. He is dying. Oh, you cannot tell me he's fit. Look at him. <laughs> That, there you go. That's, that's, people didn't know, by the way, that before your first game you had a vasectomy and uh, <laughs> it, was, it was a fair effort. But that's just how you ran, isn't it? It, it is how I run. And we, um, at the Pies, probably after that uh, commentary there, they tried to change my running style. Yeah. Didn't work out too much. <laughs> no. So, um, no. We stuck at it and, yeah. You're like a young Cliffy Young. Uh, I thought, let's take you back to it. This is one of my favourite photos of you right. as a child. And the, yeah, the reason why I, I love this is because I always get emotional when I see a young boy's first flanny. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why'd you have a leather tie on a flanny? What are you, what are you doing? That's a good question. There I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I think there's, a, there's an undercut there, there's a bowl cut, there's a flanny, there's a leather tie, and there might be a little pin on the tie as well. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, they were all hand-me-downs from my brother, but um, <laughs> shocking kit. Blame mum and dad for that. Definitely. Fair enough. Well, you have gone with a traditional wins or not, which I really appreciate. <laughs> um, there's this one too, by the way. Uh, this is from your debutant ball. I believe, Heath, this is from your debutant ball. Um, an interesting decision to wear uh, the cummerbund on your head. But, uh, <laughs> mate, take us, take us through that one. What's... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb here and say not a lot of action that night <laughs> for you. Well, back in the day, the girl had to ask the guy, so obviously I got asked to the debutante ball. Don't think she knew I was going to rock up like that. Or I, wouldn't have got, I wouldn't have got invitation. Um, average performance by the, the hairdresser at that point in time, which was my sister, so blame her completely. Jeez, you're right. your family under the bus every yeah. chance you get. Can we, you mentioned Mickey before. I mean, you, you had him in your time at... most of your time at Collingwood. I mean, tell us about the relationship. Some of the vision over the time was player and coach in fairly heated conflict at times. What was the relationship like with, with him? No, he was... He was, like a, uh, he was like a father to most yeah. of us. He was the father figure. Um, he knew how to get the best out of most of the players. Look at this. <laughs> he has got sometimes you in his Sometimes we sides. didn't agree. No. Um, <laughs> sometimes we didn't agree with each other, but I think he, he loved that about the so-called rap pack, that yeah. um, he could challenge us and he'd get the best out of us and, and we'd challenge him at times and he'd threaten to drop us or whatever it was. So, um, no, nah, he's, he's a legend and he was he the, the one who impacted my career. And as I said, he left me on the halfback flank for, <laughs> for 10 years. Still and in touch with him forward. these days? You're still in contact? You just yeah, ringing. definitely, yep. yeah. Yep. Like, message him all the time. At, as he says, at all hours, no matter what time yep. of the day it is or <laughs> night, um, send him a message so he makes sure that he knows I'm OK. Yep. Just for old time's sake, you just ring him up and get him to give you a spray. <laughs> <laughs> Be nice just to at 3 a.m. sometimes. Feel like yeah. you're back there again. Yeah, yeah a lot of uh, he's not alone, by the way. The players at Collingwood, you know, many of them loved Mick Mothouse. Oh, uh, yep. You know, honest and uh, his integrity, a man of his word, never more evident, by the way, Heath, than when Mick spoke at the Collingwood Best and Fairest night in 2011. I couldn't possibly coach against the boys that I've been with, some for 12 years. I don't know what I have to say, 
but I'm not coaching anywhere else. I think he meant that night. He wasn't coaching anywhere else. <laughs> were, you, um, were you surprised that he coached Carlton? Or he went on to coach Keith? No, nah, not at all. He's, nah. he's a... Like, they, saw, they call him career coaches. Mm, he's a career yeah, coach yeah. and he's, he's one of the best in the business. And, and yeah, he taught a lot of people and, um, over the time and premiership coach at a yeah. few different clubs yeah. and he's very good at what he did. So there's, there's no surprise there. 2010, obviously, you know, one of the crowning moments in, in your career, premiership with Collingwood after the drawn... Um, your old man, Ray, had a wretched, blighted career at Collingwood when it came to grand finals. He was one of those unlucky ones. H how wrapped was your dad for you that you got to experience this? Well, it goes beyond unlucky when you lose five grand or four yeah. grand finals. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, yeah. He's obviously not good enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we did. I did feel sorry for him a little bit. Um, and when I walked down the race after... We'd done the lap of honour and all that. Walked down the race. He was at the end of the race with my mum and um, brother and all that. And I put the medal around his neck and said, you keep that. Um, still haven't got it back. <laughs> I think I uh, still don't know where it is. Um, but he, he, he loved that moment. He loved oh, to see his boys, yeah. both boys, win a, win a premiership. Um, and, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a pretty touching moment. But when I was getting photos later on, I didn't have a premiership medal, so I was just pinching them off other boys. <laughs> So I could have something around my neck. Well, it was a, it was a famous moment for a famous club, yeah. and you know, even if you don't like Collingwood, you're aware of uh, the, their enigmatic nature, especially the fans oh, yes. uh, who are like no other. Uh, I've put together a little vignette of <laughs> Collingwood fans, which I believe will speak for itself. <laughs> I'm surprised you got the whole Shaw family in one room. <laughs> so, sticking with 2010, it is, it's arguably one of the most famous moments in recent grand final history, the smother of Nick Revolt. We're going to roll the vision. Can, can you take us through, as much as you can remember, where you were and what you were seeing and what you were thinking at the time? Can you talk us... So, so let's roll the vision. I was on the, the ground, the, definitely. OK, so, so the take it. Where were you now? What were you thinking as this was playing I think out? I was near the wing here. Um, obviously not playing on anyone as usual. Um, handball goes over top. I think Adam Schneider is my man right here who kicks the ball to Nick Rewa. And I'm running in, so I'm at least 50 metres wow. away from Snides. Um... And like I've said a few times in in interviews, Rich. I never thought I'd be remembered for. Um, yeah, I never thought I'd be remembered for a smother in my, my <laughs> career. Um, but it was a pretty big moment. It was mentioned a little bit at quarter time yeah. um, by Mick, but quickly pushed to the side. But lot, not many people remember like. My man actually kicked it to yep. him. So if I had done the work early, it wouldn't have even got down you, there. You were running for your life, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a big spray coming up. <laughs> did, you ever, did you think about tackling him, or was it all? Did you? While I was playing it. Was it always going to be the smother? Footballers don't think, mate. No, they just okay, they, yeah. they just do. And and at that point in time, like Mick said, I was running for my life. <laughs> yeah. I think I better do something so it looks like I'm trying. Did you, did you um, bring it? <laughs> and as I got as I got closer and closer, I thought I'm a, I'm a sniff here, and then. Obviously, Nick took a bit of a wind-up and yeah. the rest is history. Yeah. Do you bring it up in conversation with him at all? With Nick? Yeah. I don't ring him every day. But... <laughs> <laughs> Let's, Let's give him a call now. Let's yeah. give him a call. Big hello to Nick, everyone. If you, I think you know, he watches this show and he, he would have been till about a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, um, right. yeah. But I just want to talk to you, by the way, you play 325 games. You, you're obviously an elite athlete. I just want to talk to you about your preparation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I want to play a little news, news uh, clip and just and talk on the back of this. Heath Shaw is set to return for Collingwood on Friday night after missing last week due to a combination of hamstring and skin fold issues. Shaw's father, club legend Ray, concedes his son may have been eating too much at home. What? <laughs> Heath, did you, did you miss a game because you were fat? 
<laughs> you can't say that these days. No. Um, <laughs> on this show, you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what, what the skin fold? How many games did you miss? How, how no. many because of the hamstring, and how many because of the skin fold <laughs> issues? Well, it was a, it was a skin fold related hamstring <laughs> injury. <laughs> To this day, I, I say to everyone, I'd rather be fat and happy than skinny and unhappy. So yeah. I enjoy my food and I enjoy a beer, so... Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> I won't have you suggest that his preparation is anything less than professional. Well, he's sure always, always... And, and you don't get to play like he's played doing, unless yeah. you train in the most professional manner available to you. <laughs> Champions are made. That's how champions are made, right there. <laughs> what are you doing? I was just. It was a cold morning. It was warming, myself, warming myself up, and um, yeah, I yeah. actually don't know what I was. Well, doing. you're only you're only just warming up now. No, don't go anywhere. There There's go. heaps more. He's sure to get through. On the other side of this, it is the front bar. Thanks, of course, to the brewery fresh. <laughs> Tomo went up and that forced me to come up, which I didn't really need to do, yeah. and they just kept on overlapping. He threw it, he didn't handball it. He definitely didn't handball it. Great stuff, Mummy. <laughs> You're a really good handballer. <laughs> hey! What's going on? Long time no see, mate. I miss you during the break. <laughs> oh, absolutely <laughs> magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. Hey, sure, especially. Did you do that stuff for you, or was it for your teammates? Or what, why were you? Why have you always been so chirpy out there? Well, we always said, as a backline, it makes it easier if everyone's talking and everyone's communicating together. So, yeah. and it's easy for me to get loose man in the backline if everyone else has got a man and they're worrying about my <laughs> man as well. So, um, a lot of the time it was directing people to man up my man, but sure, yeah. it's a lot easier. Yeah, it well, is well, beautiful. Yeah. Just some old stock standard ones, mate. Toughest opponent. Toughest opponent, I, as a young buck, I played on Ben Cousins in Perth. I know it was his hometown, but he was the hardest running player I've ever played on. Yep. Um, toughest small forward was probably Stephen Milne. Yeah, right. What about uh, easiest opponent? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to Don't answer that question. Well, there's... <laughs> The easiest opponents are the ones that are slow, like high skin folds. Um, <laughs> and they aren't that smart. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a few of them out there, especially at the moment. <laughs> Rod, no names are. No, you don't. Oh, right. Right. No, 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 don't do that. I do it. Hey, mate. Heath, we've got a segment on the show that we really love and you're going to feature beautifully. This is called Rewrite the Rules. It's proudly brought to you all by Carlton Zero. Oh, yeah. It's yep. a sensible alternative. Get on board. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can I ask you, you, you we, we talked about chirpiness and, and talking on the field. You gave some of the greatest praise, and usually to your own teammates. Oh, yeah. Talk us through this. Here you are. That's, that, that's directed not at an umpire. Teammate. Your that's your captain, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, and again. What are you doing? Is this tactical or are you venting? Are you genuinely upset? Well, I'm not sure if you know... Um, I've never done anything wrong in my life. <laughs> so, look at this. I'm That's just... after the game. You've won that game. <laughs> That's after the game. Aiden Core was so sick of you, he even went and played at North Melbourne. <laughs> Don't accept mediocrity like yes. when I'm playing. I aim for perfection, even though I'm the closest thing to I'm not perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, I just... Yeah. I've never done anything wrong. And when you're a backman, you have to blame somebody. Do, if, do you if your man's, even if your man's kicked ten goals, you've got to blame <laughs> someone. Do you apologise after the game? Or do you wind down? Or do you go, oh, sorry, I've just got a bit of white line fever out there, <laughs> or, but I'm back down now. I've never apologised in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it'd take 24 hours and you'd still be doing it. The family day after the 2011 grand final, I'm led to believe that poor Ben Reid, your teammate at Collingwood, was still copping it from you after you'd been knocked over by the Cats. Is that true? Well... It, it wasn't a great game, obviously. We, <laughs> no. we um, in that, that year, 2011, we lost three games for the whole year, which was pretty unheard of. We yeah. lost them all to Geelong, yeah. um, and one of them was a grand final, unfortunately. And, and Reedy, <laughs> obviously, 
Tom Hawkins can credit his career to Ben Reid because he turned it on that game. Um, <laughs> and after you lose a grand final, you go to family day and it's a little bit of a morgue when you lose. So yes. I tried to spark the boys up a bit by like, jumping on the back of Reedy and just like, giving the old tomahawk. <laughs> I don't think he enjoyed it that much. <laughs> oh, what a surprise. Um, it might have scarred him for life, but he can credit Tomahawk's career to, to that game. Yeah, yeah, there pretty good. You yeah, love yeah. giving a spray, by the way. We saw the footage there of you giving a spray to your teammates, your captain. By the way, it wasn't just your teammates, by the way. You weren't afraid to even give it to, like, to the runner. <laughs> what, do you, what has the runner done there, he? He's wearing an orange top on. <laughs> Didn't like the colour. Fair enough. Nick so, Mouldhouse would be proud of you. We've spoken about the move to GWS. How close were, was that to being Geelong when you left Collingwood? Um, yeah, it was, it was very close. I obviously met with the Giants, which was a young, up-and-coming club who yep. won one game the year before, which wasn't ideal. Um, and then yep. Geelong was an established club that were pushing for finals constantly yep. and a little bit older. So um, it was a tough decision because I never thought I'd left Collingwood. I'd leave Collingwood, sorry. Um, so it was it was hard decision, but um, as I said, the buddy deal going the other way sort yeah. of swung things towards the Giants. And you, you made an immediate impact at uh, GWS and trained the house down. Oh, yeah. uh, no, th this is you at one of your first hit outs. Look at that. <laughs> 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 You what, did you just forget what? your shorts? Or, uh, <laughs> did, you, did you swim to training? <laughs> How did you get what there? are you doing? It's pretty, it's, it's pretty muggy <laughs> up in Sydney. The weather's pretty nice. So the shorts were drenched with sweat. So uh, well, we are doing uh, a few 400s. So I decided <laughs> I'll just take the shorts off. And I wasn't coming last. I was coming first. There was no-one in the background. Um, so I whipped no the shorts off. No one coming near you, I would have thought. <laughs> had the Speedos on, which was I thought was a good decision. So you mentioned before the Giants in 2019 and you got to the grand final. The, the preliminary final was a great game against your old mob. Pound for pound, player for player, Shorey, how good was this group of players that you were part of? Yeah, it was unbelievable. And um, in the lead-up to that, obviously, the grand final, where we didn't go too well, the previous four weeks, I think it was three weeks, was probably the best three weeks I've had in footy. We, right. we beat the Bulldogs. Um, we went up to Brisbane, we beat them. And then we went to Collingwood. Uh, so we went to the MCG and beat Collingwood and the MCG and then come back the next week and embarrassed ourselves. But um, the three weeks previous were huge. Uh. And that group... Um, we grew throughout that three weeks and um, all of those wins were very memorable, um, especially the Collingwood one at the G in a prelim. And I actually... I thought Collingwood people want to kill me after the game. <laughs> yes. um, but they were wishing us all good luck for the, the week after. And Eddie came in the rooms, <laughs> the Giants' rooms, after the game and said good luck next week. So mm. it, was, it was a big occasion and... Um, I was wrapped to it that we actually got the opportunity to play in a grand final. Yep. Well, you're obviously excited. It was a massive win for the club, probably the Huge. biggest club uh, oh, win in the club's yeah. so uh, far. history. Yep, yep. Um, none of you would have been as happy as um, the assistant coach at the time, Amon Buchanan. Uh, judging by his reaction in the coach's box after the siren left. <laughs> The siren. There he is in the front. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He's getting probably done now. He's getting married. No, he's he's done. No, 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 <laughs> well, yeah, I think he missed the next week with a bruised boss. Because um, he had a fair crack at it. Mate. We won't... But you know, as you said, you, you, had, you got roughed up a bit in the, in the 2019 final, uh, grand final against Richmond. Just out of interest, who did you play on? <laughs> <laughs> I played on a lot of players. Who did you, who'd you play on? Who did you spend most I time I spent on? a little bit of time on Dusty. Yeah. Uh, How, how'd that go for you? <laughs> Jesus. Have a listen to him. <laughs> He went all right. That he day. went all right. He he went went all right. What did you did you make a suggestion to him at half time or? At, at... It wasn't half time. It was a bit <laughs> later on the game, and obviously it was a rough game for us. And the more you, the tr the harder you try, yeah. sometimes the worse it comes yeah. off. And I've said to a few people, we lost by about eighty points, and it was like a, a genuine forty point loss. Like I'll give Richmond forty point loss, but halfway through the third, um, I think they kicked four or five in a row. And I was like, I, I looked at Dusty and we were standing in the goal square and, to be honest, I didn't want him to kick any more goals than me, so I was like, do you reckon we could just buy the siren now? <laughs> I don't 
don't think we're going that well. I don't think we're getting anywhere near it. Um, and he just looked, gave me a little wry smile and said, no, we've got plenty left. And I was like, no, that's not ideal. That's not ideal. <laughs> uh, that's a tough assignment. In hey, you keep giving, which is amazing. You've, you've got more to give to the game of footy. And anybody who's seen you and... Uh, Daisy, Dale Thomas and the Hooter and Daisy there we show go. knows that. It's on every Monday on seven plus. What's the what's what are you trying to what are you trying to achieve with your show? What's the That'd be a pretty loose show, I'm guessing. <laughs> what's you the, we're between, not trying to achieve a hell of a lot. Yeah, to be <laughs> and you and Daisy, that show will need a black box recorder, I reckon. <laughs> because, <laughs> How would you and I hope you're on delay because would... that would get bent out of shape pretty quickly, I reckon. <laughs> well we just we want to give we actually want to speak about the stuff we weren't allowed to speak about when we were players. Yeah, so play, yeah. everyone gets silenced as an AFL footballer um, from media departments and clubs and all of that. We yeah. we just want to tell the truth about what's actually happening and and sometimes we target obviously media personalities from other networks Ooh. who we think oh. are not so great. Oh. Um, <laughs> we target a few oh. players and a few coaches from, like from opposition teams, but. We're, we're there to have a bit of fun and, um, yeah, tune in right. on, on Mondays. We, we like to have Welcome to the stable, the Seven Network. I think that's where we started. That's exactly where we there, started. So. Well, they, they, actually, they actually asked if we want to move to Thursday nights at 8.30 and... Um, <laughs> We say we're not quite ready for that yet, but I um, think you we'll are. see what happens. I think you are. <laughs> Some of the professionalism shown on this show tonight. Well, <laughs> what are you going to move for? What are you going to move for? <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for coming on, mate. The Good career, on you, mate. The career so far the has game. been enormous. Uh, you've been a credit to yourself and the family. The family's contribution of footy speaks for itself. We appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Be sure our special guest here on the front bar. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, the one and the only... Friday Night Footy starts at 7 on 7 Mate with the Telstra Friday Night Countdown. News, views, expert insight. Your home for the most comprehensive preview of footy's biggest nights. Start your weekend right. And the snap is there. With the Telstra Friday Night Countdown. 7 p.m. on 7 Mate. Show. It's lovely to have you with us. Fantastic. Hey, Sam, the audience tonight, oh, absolutely top shelf. One of the Magnificent. Greats. One of the greats. Uh, they've got a lot of good footy <laughs> to look forward to this weekend. Starts tomorrow night, Saints and the Cats. Imagine if they were alive. It would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've been good. Yeah. Hey, what, a, what a round. No, no, Richmond, the Giants. We've just been talking about uh, 2019. Melbourne, Carlton. There's a lot to look forward to there. Uh, there's some great football. Make sure you watch it all here. On the... what are you... Oh, it's very funny. Oh, it's not that funny. I mean, it's... No, no, it's article. I'm reading. What are you, what are you TV, TV what are you week. Reading? About the kings of comedy. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, he's gone down Media Street, the kid. <laughs> so talk me what, through that. There what is wrong with is you? That's you with Ed and your creepy uncle. Is it? <laughs> what's, what's going on there? That's what, what is it? You know what that is? What is it? Oh, did, yeah, no, just answer uh, your own questions. Well, Go, it's just got a touch of the Hillsong chic about it. <laughs> you know, that young Christian vibe? We, no, we I don't, you, you didn't know this. Ed and I are appear, we've got a special guest spot on uh, Home and Away, and there we are standing next to Alf. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that the right The show? Kings yeah, of Comedy. Right. Yeah, the well, Kings of Comedy. By the way, page, it's on. Um, Page 93, page, which, page page 93 93. which is the sweet spot in that. <laughs> uh, that uh, front cover had Taylor right. Walker oh, at uh, Jasmine's Risky Move. He'll be all over that, won't he? He'll be rushing out and buying that, Tex. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a big, well, he's a big home and away fan, as he told us on the show last week. Can you week. sign it at least for Oh, yeah, me? no, I'll yeah, sign yeah. it. I'll, I'll sign, sign my yeah. coffee. That's <laughs> the kings of comedies. Because <laughs> you were once called the king of zing. Do you remember that? In an article. <laughs> Oh, I just like f- f- following your work. So I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. It's uh, time. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to sign it. I'll sign yeah, it. All right. right. How do you spell dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Before, how long have a... you been into Scientology? Just leave it alone. Wait, hey, there's a very special yeah. announcement here. Big Free oh, here Seven is not too far away. You know all about this. Our great mates at Sportsbet are throwing their support behind Fight M and Dune. This is what they're doing. They are going to donate $2,000 for every one of your legs in Mixed Multi that doesn't land, that you get wrong. <laughs> they're going to donate 2000 bucks all the way up what? to the Whoa. Big Freeze. Can I just suggest that? that it may... starts tonight, too. So everyone, will you, every time you get one wrong, 2000 bucks. What do you mean? That may send them under. Sports bet. Every time you get one wrong, oh, no, it's going to be a big impost, but um, 2000 bucks <laughs> goes to the Freeze. It's endorsement from Sports bet. Oh, well, <laughs> they've obviously seen you've, the segment before. Yeah, you've got, four, <laughs> you've got some form. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take all that money. And I'll take it out tonight and plonk it on this oh. multi right. because it cannot lose. Right, let's have a look. Let's see. Do you need your lucky pen? <laughs> I need my lucky <laughs> pen. Um, right, first leg. Well, first leg. Are we yeah, into it? We go, we go, okay, yeah. first up, due to COVID safety, uh, safety boom, mic operators have been busy in recent times because yep. of the COVID safety. Uh, so keep an eye on the quick thinking uh, of this operator uh, to an interview with Josh no, Kennedy. Watch him. That's the boom uh, mic coming in from the side. Yep. We did it oh, no, we've got a pole. How do we work our way around this? Uh, what will I do? Genius. I'd like to wager that that boom operator is a lot better than the idiot who operates boom on this show. What? Yeah, am I right, fellas? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get out of it. Get out of it. Practice this. Get out of it. <laughs> Stop. By the way, that, that, you know that went that, that went worse in rehearsal. <laughs> Can we, st we still do. Oh, no, no, no. You, you tried to take something? Yeah, I don't know. So can I have it? No, you can't have it. But how about you take Josh <laughs> Kennedy to have 30 plus against the pies, and I'll give you 450 for that. What do you reckon? Yeah, I love it. Thank oh, you. No, we're all right. uh, second we're leg, right. wearing your club's merchandise to the footy is a great tradition. It really is. See, even spot what this fan, <laughs> Swans fan, brought to the game. Okay. Very good. Knowing that a free gig had been paid. Uh, and we're going, oh, here it is. That's, that's a grown man, ladies and gentlemen. Getting some free advice down there. That's a good looking kick, Tommy. He's not going to like it. No. Sticks to his guns. Yeah, well done, Tommy. All right. Too good. I'd like to wager yep. that you don't want that bloke checking your prostate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but how about you take Sack him. Paul and Gus <laughs> to run a place, race Check Corbett, your prostate the <laughs> Albion Park Dogs, and I'll give you two ninety. What do you reckon? Well, I'll take that, whatever right, it was. Here we go, third leg. Third, third leg, go. this is my favourite leg. Coach, <laughs> here we go, yeah. Car Carlton coach David T. There you go, is he? He's a man of many talents. Watch here in his presser as he speaks without moving his lips. Oh no. <laughs> hey, what? What are they? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to wager. <laughs> that shot probably should have been front on. <laughs> I'd like to wager. Uh, that, uh, oh, just hit me on the head with that. Would it? Hopefully, I could forget this segment. Ever, ever went to air. Whatever you were going to have. Whatever you yes. have, you can't have it. But how about you take the Blues to beat Melbourne? I'll give you three seventy for the upset. Whatever, I'll what take it. Oh, no. well, you can't. You can't just bail on the multi. You <laughs> Come on, give us a oh, lead. Right. You're right. Uh, it's just, it's, Bert Newton's got better legs than this multi. <laughs> <laughs> Once again... Hey, hey, hey. Keep it easy. I'm, I'm on the cover of TV week. <laughs> yeah. hey, Bert would love this. Bert thing. would love it because he's, uh, he's the king. Can I have it? I don't, what, I don't know what you have. <laughs> like, yeah, what, what you haven't for? even done the fourth leg yet. OK, well, OK, yeah. to bring this home. Yeah, here we go. Hey, you've got to love this. Right. You watch me come home like a train. <laughs> <laughs> Face masks are now part of, <laughs> of everyday life across, oh, yeah. uh, across the world. Yeah, yeah. But some people may not have nailed how long they should be wearing a face mask outdoors. <laughs> Michael, you're never going to be able to go outside without a mask ever again. <laughs> I'd like to wager I go through the exact same thing with my G-string tan. Am I right, girls? Yeah, you on. can't have it. 
But how about you take? Uh, but, you, but how about you take Burnley to beat Leeds in the English oh, Premier League? And I'll give you two eighty seven. I'll take it. Back it up. What do we got? That's going to be a pretty good multi. I reckon. Oh, yeah. It's going to go off. Go, oh yeah. Cannot oh, lose. Thirty eight bucks. If you like the look of that, uh, jump on a mixed multi sports bet app. Look for mixed multi in the mega bet <laughs> section of the app. <laughs> and whatever you do, wow. Careful responsibly. <laughs> uh, there it is. Good work. Don't go anywhere. On the other side of this, last shout. All right. On the other side. Racing, Guitra and Behemoth battle it out in the Goodwood. Eduardo and Trekking headline the Doomben 10,000. Trekking got up to win final stride. Plus big stakes racing from Flemington and Rose Hill. Four states, two group ones, all on the one channel. What a man, what a family, and what an army they have formed as they continue to play on and fight the beast. It's not it's coming around again. Uh, it's that time of the year, big free seven. You know what to do. The beanies have become yeah. so iconic. Uh, support the cause. You go to Coles, Bunnings, you go to fightmd.org.au. Uh, pick one up. You know they're going to sell out quickly. They always do. Look at him. I, I, love, yeah, look at him. I love that man. You know, we'll do anything for that man. But, oh, jeez, with the beanies. Oh, whenever I put one of these beanies on, people think I'm going to knock over a bottle shop. <laughs> 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 I do. For I you, do. Neil, I, I wear it. And, uh, God, what a man. You, yeah, Vigil. yours looks great. Vigil. It's done, you know. That's uh, cutting-edge fashion right here. No, make sure you get one. Okay. FightMND.org.au. Um, like and Papa play Smurf. on them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you can't get inspired by Gargamel. Neil if you can't get inspired, who? Gargamel. He was the baddie in the Smurfs. <laughs> Gargamel. <laughs> you can't get inspired by Neil Danaher. Nothing's going to inspire. So it. get a boonie. Don't waste. Don't waste. Don't that was waste the Lego time movie. Really that was what? a Lego movie. Was it? Gargamel. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It feels an appropriate way to go out. <laughs> Uh, keep the fight. Become part yeah, of the army. Body you, uh, Barry Round and Fitzy on the show next week. This Fantastic. has been the front bar. Thanks for being part of it again. Woo-hoo!